Hey everybody, Hoosier Jedi here with another review for you. This time I'm talking about the Doctor Who Christmas special for 2013, The Time of the Doctor. And this is it, folks. Our uh, end of the road with Matt Smith as the Doctor. The end of Doctor, well, let's just call him Eleven for the sake of simplicity. And, wow, this is just another e epic, epic ending for one of the Doctors in the modern era of Who. And I gotta say, this is... My, my, my mind is still blown, especially after what we saw with uh, the 50th anniversary special. I mean, just, just these two episodes coming on the heels of each other. It's... <sighs> It's glorious, folks. There's really just no other word for it. This this is just how amazing Doctor Who could be, all distilled down into one beautiful hour. And you know that this is, as a fan, something that you're going to remember watching for the first time for the rest of your days. And of course, you know, we'll probably, like we we do, come back to this episode and watch it more than once. But... You know, there is never that, uh, never quite the same experience you have as when you walk down that road the first time. And I, I just can't think of a better word. It was glorious. It really was. And what I like about this more than the final episode with David Tennant, and as heartbreaking as that was, it was horrible to see David Tennant go. Because as great as Christopher Eccleston was, it really was David Tennant who really, really defined new Doctor Who for the for this, this for this millennium. But what I the one thing that really made me upset about the way that when the tenth Doctor left was his final words, "I don't want to go." And of course, it was so poignant and beautiful, and, and this was all highlighted by that, of course, being his final words in the 50th anniversary special. The, do the Tenth Doctor's final words never changed. There is no argument as to what they were. But that Doctor, the Tenth Doctor, he really did seem to view regeneration as death. And here we have such a contrast. The Eleventh Doctor, when he leaves, when he goes out, he literally goes out with a smile. He goes out with memories of the first face that he ever saw. The first person that his, his, his incarnation ever encountered. The girl who waited. The girl who loved that raggedy Doctor. And he goes there after having the chance to properly say goodbye to the impossible girl. And of course, you know, in his own way, he even gets to say goodbye to Amy. And I guess, uh, I guess the doctor didn't really want to say goodbye to Rory that much. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Anyway. And... I, I won't lie, I was like, oh god, I, I, I think if this keeps going, I might cry. And I'm one of those people, I never cry. I seriously have not cried in like 10 years. And th this moment, it was just, again, in contrast to what happened with the 10th Doctor, this was a celebration, a celebration of this Doctor, the 11th Doctor. Of course, after all of that, he could go out with a smile. And this is really, this is what I want to see when these things happen. I want the Doctor to be at peace with what's happened. Like when the fourth Doctor passed away, which regenerated. Now, I was very new, watching re old reruns of that on my local PBS station. I didn't really have access to the internet back then. I mean, this was the 90s. So when the doctor regenerated, I didn't really understand what had happened. It really took a while for me to sink in that, oh, the doctor can do this. I really had no idea he could do that when I first saw that episode. So, but the great thing about that, when Tom Baker left and he changed and, and regenerated into Peter Davidson, the doctor was at peace. He was smiling. He was happy. 
And that made Peter Davidson coming onto the scene just so much easier to accept. And now we have Peter Capaldi here. <laughs> now, this is a fella, of course, he's been on Doctor Who and on Torchwood. And he's well known for a British series called In the Thick of It, which uh, I'm now going to sometime, uh, now that I have uh, some vacation time coming up, I definitely am going to take some time and try and hunt some of that up because I really, really want to see some more of this fellow. I've, I've seen like one clip of him from that show on YouTube. So I'm really very curious to see more about Peter Capaldi. The, but this brief glimpse we have of him as the Doctor, uh, it's really hard to say very much about it, but I gotta say, this guy, I love what he does with his eyes. He does so much with his eyes. Just what we saw on the 50th anniversary, that hardcore badass look he gives, just with the eyes, and then that look he gives Clara. You know, it's even been remarked by someone else. Somehow, with just his body language, that just feels like a Tom Baker moment right there. And then, of course, we get the line, I have new kidneys. I don't like the color. Well, of course, a little instability is uh, par for the course for the doctor right after he's regenerated. And, of course, so is um, the TARDIS being out of control. I mean, that's what happened when Matt Smith came onto the scene. And also, this sort of, in a way, brings us around to uh, William Hartnell. We have Peter Capaldi being certainly an, one of the older fellows to take over as the Doctor. But this, again, kind of goes back to the, the first Doctor. Now, William Hartnell, despite the fact that he looked older, was actually only 55 years old when he got the role. So here we have sort of a middle-aged fellow in a ship that he doesn't know how to fly with this um, pretty young girl bouncing around the universe. It, it is, in so many ways, an appropriate return to where we were when we first met the, the original Doctor. And, of course, it's also fitting. Clara is a teacher at Coal Hill School, just as the Doctor's first companions, outside of Susan, were. So, just thematically, the uh, the Twelfth Doctor is off to a beautiful start. But anyway, getting back to um, to the episode itself and talking about some of the details there. Uh, first of all, I'm glad that not a huge amount of time was spent on the whole Doctor, you have to pretend to be my boyfriend thing. I mean, this feels like something that really would have gone over with, you know, Rose Tyler. Th this really feels like something out of the Rose Tyler era, and I'm glad that that never really went that far. But it was, certainly was nice to see a little bit more of Clara's family, and the scene with her grandmother was very sweet. And I got an enormous kick out of, of course, all the references to uh, the previous mythology of Doctor Who. My personal favorite was where he mentions uh, swiping that doodad off of Raz off the Master from the Death Zone. Of course, this is a reference to the Five Doctors, which was one of the really great, you know, 1980s episodes, one of the real highlights of the Peter Davidson era. And of course, we also get some real answers. You, you got it. It is so amazing when you see just how much of the new Who mythology comes together in this episode. You know, silence will fall, and of course, the explanation for how Matt Smith's Doctor really was supposed to physically be the last Doctor. You know, he basically regenerated into David Tennant twice. Now, granted. <clears throat> Uh, some of the comments that have been made online by the creators explain this much more clearly than the show did. But yeah, you know, if you're, it's been a while since it's definitely been a while since Journey's End, which is where uh, he would have regenerated into the quote-unquote tenth Doctor for the second time. But nonetheless, it just just the way so much comes together this episode is is phenomenal. I love things like this. I love it when a plan comes together, if I might borrow a line from the A-Team. And, you know, the creators using the mythology of the show, having a long-term plan. Pardon me. Uh, things like that, I truly and genuinely love. And, of course, um, the whole idea of it being possible for Time Lords to be granted a new cycle of regenerations. This is nothing new. This has been around since the old days. 
And uh, I definitely like that, you know, the old version, the elderly one, doc, the ele elderly 11th Doctor that looked more than a little like the first Doctor wasn't the last that we saw of Matt Smith. I like this, that we got to go and see him regenerate without the makeup, looking well and truly proper like the 11th Doctor should. I love how he took off that tie and threw it down to the floor. You know, that, more than anything, says right there that yes, this era has ended. But this Doctor, he goes away with a smile on his face and a promise to himself that he will never forget a day of this existence. And this has not always been an easy existence for him. There have been horrible, horrible things that have happened to the 11th Doctor. Suffering and loss and pain and fear. But ultimately, ultimately, he had that horrible burden of believing that he had destroyed his own people, committed genocide of his own race, lifted from him. He realized that there was a possible better future for him. Who knows? And, you know, I could really go on and on. I mean, obviously Matt Smith is delivering a phenomenal performance. Obviously there were so many moments in this episode that were beautiful and touching and heartwarming. <laughs> and uh, we get a confirmation, thanks to that little truth field, that yet another companion has fallen in love with the Doctor. <laughs> but, but, just saying those things, I mean, that's really just sort of repeating that which doesn't really need to be said. What I want to say, even though it is, I guess at this point, a little repetitive, is just how happy I am that when his end came, the Eleventh Doctor was happy, that he was at peace. And we should all be so fortunate when our time comes. And it's even as the Doctor said, everybody's time comes to an end. But if we can all go out that way, at peace and with a little smile on our face, what a world, huh? Imagine a world like that. And the thing about that is, though, that, more than anything, is a choice that we make in how we view our lives, in how we live our lives. The end comes for us one way or another, sometime or another. No, None of us have ever escaped that and no human ever will. But we can have that choice. We can have the choice, the contrast between the 10th and 11 doctors. We can stand there and have our final words be some variation of, I don't want to go. Or we can choose to go away looking back on our lives, our life, even the hard days, the painful days, the horrible days, but not wanting to forget them because they helped make us who we are. And of course, keeping all the people that we loved and the wonderful days, the beautiful moments, the exciting moments, the moments that we would never trade for anything, keeping them right there with us in our hearts and always near in our thoughts. We can choose to, to have those final moments be like that, to walk away from this world with a smile on our face. It's all a choice we have. It's all a choice we can make. And, in so, and it's probably the last choice we make last choice we make. 
if that is the last choice we make. It's kind of funny that people choose I don't want to go over I won't forget any of this. Really. Why would you make any choice other than I don't want to forget any of this? Well, Matt Smith has given us an absolutely unforgettable doctor. And now the future is wide open. And we're going to have Peter Capaldi as our doctor, as our guide. And where he's going to take us and what's going to happen, who knows? Let's find out together. I'll be there. I hope you'll be there with me. Until next time, take care and have a good one.